Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sai Tao. Today, we'll talk about the investigation of uh, break off forces of pipes in sand. So, when the pipes are buried, uh, they are easily forgotten, but they'll suffer from different kinds of situations. For example, um, if you bury a pipe in a slope, it could suffer from landslide. Um, the pipe also can experience differential ground motions caused by a fault, so the pipe can move downward or upward relative to the soil. And if we bury like a small diameter pipe or a cable into the seabed, they could move in different direction due to the ocean currents. So the engineers are very curious about uh, what kind of uh, this force pipe movements relationship look like if we move the pipe in different directions, and what kind of factors could influence on these curves. Like if we have a different berry depths, um, what well, these uh, curves could be changed. And the underground, the sand is loose or dense what is uh, curves could be changed as well. So another big question is how we determine these uh, break-off forces or the failure load from these curves. So what we do is we conducted a series of tests at the beginning um, and then we analyze the data compared to the models we have and then improve those models, consider different factors and then we Eventually, we will develop a design equations so the engineers can use into the field. So this is our test facility in the lab. Um, so we employ 10 moving angles, so the pipe can move upward, horizontally, downward, and these are 10 moving directions. And then we place the, this box with sand in loose and dense state. We also have a different sensor, so we can measure the pipe movements and the load during the tests. Um, and for each moving angles, we use three berry depths from 1.5 times of diameters to five times of diameters. And here are the two typical results when the pipe is buried at four times of the diameters in dense sand. So you can see when the pipe is moving upward, you will see there's a peak load there and the force is reduced when we increase the pipe movements. And when we move the pipe horizontally, you can see there's a several peaks because there's a different failure surface developed to the ground surface. And the next steps, we need to determine what are these uh, break-off forces. So we use the peak value stairs as the failure loads. And the next steps, we can summarize all the test data into one figure. So x-axis, that's the horizontal force. Y-axis, that's the vertical force. And that the blue short line there is the load curve when we move pipe upward. And this light blue line there is the load curve when we move pipe downward. And the magnitude is definitely is much higher. And the different curves with the different coverts represents the load curves when the pipe are moving in different directions. And then we need to determine the failure load as, we, uh, as I did in the previous slide, as we shown in these uh, red dots. And then we connect to each other um, to, um, to develop this uh, failure surface. So engineers can use this uh, failure load envelope easily from this figure. And then what we do is we have the test data. We need to verify our numerical simulations. Um, because with the help of this numerical simulations, we can explore more kind of uh, more conditions to cover those cases. We cannot just uh, do all the tests in our, uh, our lab. So we can have a different barrier depths. We can have a different size of the diameters. Um, so we can continue conducting those uh, parametric studies, eventually we will have these design tools to quantify these uh, uh, breakout forces. So this is the first effort to investigate these breakout forces uh, thoroughly when a pipe are moving in different directions. And these design tools will help engineers to determine these breakout forces reasonably so they can reduce the potential risk after the pipe are buried. So thank you so much.